그 있는 사람은 주님의 말씀에 증인이 되어라. 그러면 구원을 밝혀지라. Hear the word of the Lord. Repent and turn to the Son of God. He is Christ. Jesus. I considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn, before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. And behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of man, and a mouth speaking great things. But moving on to a different subject, mm. I noticed that you often quote scripture from the Bible. Mm. Are you more geared towards Christianity? Well, uh, half the things I say are quotes from other brilliant and inspired writings. Mm -hmm. uh, you just have to catch me at the right time. Mm. Yes. So you do believe in God? Oh, yes, absolutely. Mm. <laughs> I bet that's a breath of fresh air for a lot of people. <laughs> well, uh, to be honest, uh, I wasn't raised in a Christian uh, household, but I am fully aware of a theistic existence, and I do sincerely respect with the utmost reverence the various theological mm -hmm. positions of other faiths. Okay. And out of one of them came forth the little horn which waxed exceeding great toward the south and toward the east and toward the pleasant land. And through his policy also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand. And he shall magnify himself in his heart and by peace shall destroy many. And you do believe in Jesus Christ? Oh, uh, well, I believe that uh, Jesus is an incarnation of the same deity of other prophets mm -hmm. in other religions. Uh, I believe that to the Jews, he is the Messiah, to the Christians, he is the Christ, right. the Buddhists, right. the fifth Buddha, the Muslims, the Imamahmandi, so on and so on. So. He shall also stand up against the Prince of Princes, but he shall be broken without hand. The horn we speak of is one among you, even today. You know him as a Mabu. He's a deceiver that promises a false peace. He will guarantee earthly ruin to those who believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. You know, Jesus said, in John chapter 10, you need to know that I have other sheep in addition to those in this pen. Mm -hmm. I need to gather and bring them too. Mm -hmm. They will also recognize my voice. Then it will be one flock, one shepherd. Mm -hmm. And this is clear that when the Lord walked among the Israelites, he was talking about him coming for people of other nationalities as well as other oh, faiths. Yes. Amen. Do not believe in his lies or wonders. For he is working under the power of the fallen one, in whom we call Satan, who is a liar and the father of all lies. Let this blood be a reminder to those who will believe in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Let this blood remind you of his great love and sacrifice for the redeemed people of God. And to those of you who believe not in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, but do worship and do obeisance unto Antichrist the marble, and have pledged allegiance to him, let this blood be a reminder of the inescapable judgment that awaits you. Yeah, yeah, otherwise, what did he mean by saying other sheep in addition to those in this pen? He wasn't just talking about the Jews, he wasn't just talking about other races, but I believe that he was talking about people of other religions as well. Woe unto you, for to you it is already too late. There's no doubt in my mind that this Amabu guy is the Antichrist. I mean, look at his name, for instance. He has six letters in each of his names. His first name is Famian, spelled F-A-M-I-E-N. That's six letters, okay? And his middle name, Sheish, which is actually the Hebrew word for the number six. It's spelled S-H-A-Y-S-H, six letters, okay? And his last name, Amabu, 
A-M-A-B-U-U, all right? So you have six letters in each of his names, 666, without a doubt. This man is the Antichrist. There's no argument. The debate is over. Um, as you know, uh, Secretary General Mabo has been working closely with Congress and the President on a lot of things regarding the economy. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I actually like the guy. He seems to have a genuine sincerity to bring fairness to the work field and also the judicial system. I know he's not born in America, but you know what? I certainly won't be against him running for president. I'm sorry to continue chopping up your name, but I have to get this right. Is your first name pronounced Famian or Famian? Uh, actually, actually, it's pronounced Famian, like Fabio, except six times more attractive. <laughs> <laughs> My request at childbirth was for me mum to give me a name that sounds like a cologne. Uh, I mean, I've always smelled good, but the name alone always sufficed. Yeah, you're right. It does sound like a cologne. Famian. Cologne for men, but made for a woman. <laughs> Order now and receive a free tub of I Can't Believe It's Not Butter. <laughs> Makes me want to read a romance novel. <laughs> yes, uh, yes there's, there's definitely a metrosexual twang to it. <laughs> well, what more can we say that most people haven't said already? He's got a good plan for the economy, and I believe that with the establishment of this new global economic program, this country will become more and more prosperous. Yeah, we um, we appreciate his desire for peace and unity, especially his position on marriage. Um, it really is a breath of fresh air to finally have more people that are so influential to our government regarding the same-sex marriage. So, you know, someone who truly understands the position we hold to in our community. Well, the Lolita Bill, named after the movie, is the act that supports and defends the sanctity of child marriage. The legalization of two children marrying one another? Not just that, but also the recognition of what's been observed as normal tradition in some parts of the Middle East for centuries. Uh, that adults and children can marry? Yes. Ah. And you've also mentioned that you really appreciate the fact that Secretary General Mabo has established this bill. Yes, I, I believe we're actually see in history unfold right before our very eyes. Child marriage for the longest time has been frowned upon as a taboo subject. It's very much frowned upon particularly here in the Western Hemisphere. Right. And I think General Amabu has done a great job defending our rights. Um, if, if you don't mind me asking, uh, how old are you again, sir? I, I just turned 52 last Thursday. <laughs> I'm a Scorpio. And, and, and so is my wife. Ah, and I take it that this is your wife? Aisha, yes. She's ten years old. Her birthday's the same day as mine. And you two just got married last yes, month? Yes, we did. We're very happy. Right, honey? She's a little shy. I'm sorry about that. Well, it should be obvious why we in the Jewish community appreciate the Secretary General. He's possibly the most sympathetic political figure to Israel ever known in history. We're especially glad to see that he somehow managed to do the impossible. That's right. The new temple is almost done, isn't it? That's correct. Our temple would not even have had a groundbreaking had it not been for the Secretary General's charisma. <laughs> there are many, including uh, Lord Maitreya, grace be upon him. Uh, think that Secretary General Amabel might actually be the Messiah. Well, what, what are your thoughts as a Hebrew Israelite? Without a doubt, the Hebrew Israelites know that a brother Amabel is the Messiah. Why? Because he fits the description of the way Yeshia is described in the Bible. Revelation 1, 14-15 makes it clear that Yeshia, or who you call Jesus, was actually a black man. You know what I'm saying? Because it says that he had hair like wool and feet like brass. Now you tell me, do these Edomites or these so-called white Jews have woolly hair? or skin like brass, no they don't. That's how we know that not only were the original Israelites were black, but that Yeshia was a black man. And this is how we know that Brother Amabu is the Messiah. Why? Because number one, he's got white woolly hair, just like the Bible says, and Brother Amabu has skin color like brass as if burnt in a furnace, just like the Bible says. So, so that should be a good enough response to that. Okay, 
우리는 오늘 역사를 만들 것이다 모두를 위해 저 바보들을 없애버려야 한다 근데 놈들이 뉴욕에서 했던 일들은 어떡하고요 아무도 저놈들은 우선 벌을 찔렸던 것 뿐이야 그리고 불의 힘도 부족했지 오늘은 놈들의 제3날이 저는 잘 모르겠어요 저는 아직도 우리가 우리가 너한테 그딴 생각이나 하랬어 닥치고 명령이나 복종해 Let he that hath an ear, let him hear. Well, here we are, live, back in Jerusalem, <laughs> celebrating the completion of the Global Peace Monument, the long-awaited and much sought-after revealing of the symbol of peace that has been highly anticipated. I have to tell you, John, I haven't felt this excited about anything since the Red Sox won the World Series back in 04. <laughs> yeah. This is an absolute phenomenal event that all of us here on Earth are privileged to bear witness to. The completion and unveiling of the Global Peace Initiative Monument. I'm so excited about this. You have no idea. <laughs> As me, too. We have a massive crowd of onlookers here in Jerusalem. Yes. People from all over the world have traveled far and wide to come right here to Jerusalem to participate in person in this grand and historical event. Absolutely. I tell you, I'm just as excited about this as you are, Veronica. Okay, I think they're ready for the unveiling of the monument. Oh, oh. wow. And, and, oh, and there it is. That. Finally, after approximately 21 months and 29 days, and standing at approximately 202.9968 meters tall, really? the long-awaited unveiling of the Global Peace Initiative Monument in the form of the Secretary General Amabu. Look at that. Oh, it's so beautiful. <laughs> you know, I have to say, John, that I'm impressed that you know the exact height and number of days involved in the erecting of the monument. <laughs> Well, it's kind of easy because there's already been much controversy about yes. this monument among the conspiracy theorists yes, and yes. the fundamentalist Christians. It took 21 months and 29 days to build the monument, hmm. which equals 666 days. Well, and the height of the monument is 202.9968 meters or 666, 666 feet tall. So. You can see how easy it is for the truthers and fundies to make the assertion that this is the monument in the image of the beast as mentioned in the Bible. Absolutely. Fundies can be so funny sometimes. Many have dubbed this seven-day war of the nations as World War III. Even several weeks after the ceasefire, the death toll still rises on an hourly basis. Though the majority of the attacks occurred in various places overseas, such as London, Toyohashi, Japan, Beijing, and Iran, the attacks in several of our nation's major cities, such as New York City, Houston, Texas, and Los Angeles, California, has caused U.S. citizens from all over the country to express fear and desperation for some sense of peace and security. 
President Birchinoff has declared a state of emergency and will be making an address this evening. My fellow Americans, it is obvious and very apparent that there is much grief in this great land today. We have suffered great tragedy. The war in the Gaza Strip has escalated to the degree where several other nations, such as North Korea, China, Russia, and including the United States, have been unintentionally brought into the conflict, and therefore escalating the conflict to an even greater degree. To the degree where every land, even this land, the United States, has suffered tremendously, in my opinion, far worse than 9-11. San Francisco, Los Angeles, New York, Fort Hood, Houston, Miami, the White House, and several other major cities in the U.S. have all been attacked. But what's most disturbing is that it has been confirmed that these attacks on our soil were calculated and premeditated. And what's worst of all, it's been confirmed that these attacks were all from within our nation. These attacks were from people that look just like you and me. The enemy has taken advantage of the great cultural diversity we have in this country and has made it extremely difficult to find them. There's just no easy way for us to establish a means to find out who exactly is behind these attacks. And we suspect that there will be more to come. Our enemy does not have a particular skin color, a particular bone structure of the face, particular language, or a particular religion. But the enemy does have a particular philosophy. And that philosophy is simply that peace is wrong. The goal of the enemy is simply to kill and destroy innocent people who seek nothing but freedom and the pursuit of happiness. But we, we plan to stop that by any means necessary. Why? Because we as Americans will not live our lives in fear, because this is our land. Well, thank you, thank you, but, but hold on a minute, because it's going to be hard work. In order to fight back and take back our freedom that our forefathers have established and family members have fought and died for, the happiness that we as Americans deserve will have to, for a short time, come with a price. We must put away our differences. We must put away our personal creeds and religions. We must put away our ethnicities so that we can bring into fruition what we believe to be the only temporary solution to the problem we face. And, and, and that is why it is with a very heavy heart that I announce today, by the powers invested in me, I've signed Executive Order 1081, placing the entire United States of America under martial law. The, 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 revised, the revised Constitution in Article 7, Paragraph 2 states, and I quote, I, I quote, the President shall remain as Commander-in-Chief of all the armed forces in the United States, and whenever it becomes necessary, he may call out armed forces to prevent or suppress any attempt to commit violence, insurrection, or rebellion. The Commander-in-Chief and his staff have been given all authority to suppress or prevent any threats of violence, insurrection, or rebellion according to the statutes of the law. Beginning of this coming Monday, to ensure the safety and integrity of our people, the following executive orders will go into effect. Executive Order 10990. The government shall have full surveillance over all modes of transportation. Executive Order 11051. Full surveillance over all railroads, airways, and storage facilities. Executive Order 10998. Full surveillance over all means of personal transportation. Executive Order 10995. Full surveillance over communication and media. Executive Order 10999, full surveillance over all food resources and farms to prevent any terrorist activity from poisoning the food supply. Executive Order 11000, full authority to mobilize civilians into work brigades under government supervision or forced labor if deemed a suspect. Our nation is a great nation, and to keep it that way, we must unite together, especially at this time. My thoughts, concerns, and condolences go out to the many families and loved ones that have experienced tremendous loss. Thank you. Now, rumor has it that the one in whom Lord Mortrea, grace be upon him, says will one day become the Messiah mm. is you. <laughs> what are your thoughts on that? 
you're, 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 you're kidding me, right? <laughs> no, no, I am afraid not to. <laughs> well, uh, I, I would, I would have to humbly disagree. I, I'm not looking to be a king, a god, a messiah, or whatever. I, I'm a servant for the people. You see, the world has given me so much I don't deserve, and I must give something back. And I cannot do that, and I refuse to do that by being somebody's messiah, king, god, whatever, you know. I, I honestly don't want it. Mm. Don't uh, want it. So, are you implying that you being the messiah is absolutely impossible? Well, uh, well, in fact, I'll tell you what. <laughs> the, the only way that I'll ever claim to be the messiah is after the devil takes over my body and mind, and that'll have to be over my dead body. <laughs>